You say it's no time for for jokes on the AD carry name? Name puns. For name puns, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so real quick. Uh, time played eight games in the LPL while Kid was out. He played in week 10 and 11. He went four and four, so a respectable record there. Uh, five Lucian games, two Vayne games, and a Kog'Ma. We'll see if Cloud9 seems to care about that at all. Blue side in the group stage has been the side of Target ban. Yep. Uh, his Jinx off the table, that's interesting enough. Uh, Invictus are likely to ban the, the those two that we expect, and then we'll see what branches out, if they have room for a Vagar or an Azir ban. And what a difficult position for Invictus. We've seen how Cloud9 have been shut down, ban Azir, Vagar, and Tom Kench. Those are the three bans that both Fnatic and AHQ ran earlier today, and that is what sort of sealed the deal for C9. IG can only ban one of those remaining, and let's see what it's going to be. It will be the Azir. So Vyga and Tom Kench available, they if the opportunity arises. Do you obviously have the opportunity to take some of these champions away. Obviously, it's not like they can pick them all at once. So if Invictus Gaming's champion pools go deep enough, they could take away the necessary parts here from C9's composition. C9, they're just lucky at least, though. What's funny about it, though, is as far as Vagar and Tom Kench themselves are concerned, Tom Kench is a bit of a counter pick. You either save someone from the burst combo, yep. or you get right on top of Vagar, which he's kind of bad about with the ultimate. So. Uh, definitely just options available if you consider sort of the counter pick game, but right now C9 are allowed to pick those champions now if they want them. Meanwhile, Invictus have already locked in that what we assume to be a bottom lane uh, duo already. Yeah, seeing this combo come out, I think we're pretty right on the money there. That's going to come out in the 2v2. That is an incredibly potent lane. We've seen it before. Not only does it trade well, Kenan can always close the gap with the Lightning Rush 2 to make sure he at least gets that passive proc uh, from the Kalista W. In addition to that, gets a couple of procs from his own. Stack, stun people, then Kalista can stack up spears, and suddenly everybody dies. I love it how you make it sound so simple. If they don't fight back. Yeah. yeah well, you just auto attack a target on me for a while. <laughs> and then they die. Yeah, weird. Don't you know? That's how, I, that's how you I get the challenge. Every man. time I fight a target dummy in a game, it never dies, though. They're freaking invincible, so I don't know if this is actually going to work. So for IG, both games that they've lost today, their opponents have brought the fight to them. Very aggressive, very in their face, and, and look to skirmish around multiple towers. Cloud9 have not necessarily played that style. They've been focused more around the actual tower kill itself. And with Tristana and sort of the defensive Morgana locked in, it's a similar recipe once again for Cloud9. Yeah, we've seen this before. Cocoon and Binding to keep them in, in place. Uh, really well scaled. 80 carry if things go rough and we have to get to the late game. Tristana trades well into Kalista, and this time IG's bot lane, unlike Fnatic, can't break the Black Shield to really get rid of the stuns from Cannon unless the support Kitties plays is incredibly well. But Kitties has been a little bit lackluster this tournament. Oh, here's a champ we haven't seen in a while. You heard Tomato Cannon himself talk about it playing poke, and right now Nidalee being hovered. It's actually one of Kakao's very best champions as well. This is something that was so scary back in the LPL. Of course, Nidalee had some nerfs ever since the playoffs, but looks like that's the consideration right now. She does fall off a little bit, so IG will need a lead into the mid game to really get ahead there. <sighs> Difficult for Invictus. And we'll find out if they can pull that one off. Lissandra's locked in. Also another potential flex here for IG. Could be for Zitai up top, could be in the mid lane. So Bjergsen running it yesterday. Uh, not so much success, unfortunately. But kind of a mixed bag here for IG. You've got yeah. Poke from Nidalee, you've got All In from Ken and Lissandra, you know, Kalista to some degree. So, a mismatch of flavors. Yes and no. If you look at traditionally how Nidalee pl was played, it was all winning lanes, pushing in, allowing Nidalee to go in and counter jungling, neutralizing the enemy jungler. Kakao said in his pregame interview that, you know, High was the foundation, and if, if he just farms in the early game, then he joins his team to even things out. Well, you can get him while he's farming if he does predictable routes. So in that sense, that could be a strategy here if we see Lissandra flex until she plays into a decent pushing lane, which she can in the mid lane. Every vague air lane almost gets pushed in. We have the counter pick in top lane. Suddenly, IG, they could be setting up for a triple push aggressive yep. jungle lane and this game could be over in 20 minutes and we've seen games completely opened up by uh, balls getting behind in his lane getting pushed on getting dived and zatai was one of the better top laners coming out of the chinese lpl we'll see if he can win his lane and that dive that we expect from Italy can happen here c9 though they get a comp they would probably blind pick if this mode existed for yep. the competitive this is exactly what they want to play and at the same time that's good for c9 but invictus game they knew this was coming yep. this is no surprise these these champions have all been played a lot. Now we have a, an aggressive counter matchup here where Nara can continue to see out trade. They're not going with any Malphite. Like if you look at Invictus comp, sometimes you can think, oh, we need hard engage. Well, no, you just take out the team fight perspective. You just win every lane as individual elements. You don't allow Cloud9 to group because that is their strategy. Get one tower, group in the mid lane, combine your powers 
we've used to call it an Exodia comp where if you get all everything together, then suddenly you win the game. If you deny Cloud9 from doing that, which Invictus Gaming very well may do, and Kakao can really we work in between the lanes as an aggressive jungler, then we have a very interesting match on our hands. Uh, the difficulty is those lanes actually have to win. Earlier today, Zatai had a kill advantage over his opponent Ziv, Olaf versus Darius, and he got killed 1v1. We saw and now a substitution. Time, how much has he been scrimming with Kitty? His kid was underperforming. How is Time going to do? Same champion as Kid from the previous match, but they need to win those lanes to allow Kakao the freedom to move around. Yeah, win or push. You can even go You can go even on CS, and usually that's fine, because at least somewhere on the, on the other side of the map, you have some pressure. But if you go even on CS in every lane, but you're pushed in everywhere, your jungle will completely annihilate the other jungler, and you'll be working with perfect information. And then you will get an advantage somewhere else, be it Dragons, be it some neutral camp somewhere. Well, something to watch for then. What can Kakao do with his lanes that he's expecting to do very well, guys? It's going to be one to watch for. They got to pick their dual lane at the very start. They thought Ken and Callista would do it. They think it's going to be enough for Invictus. Tweet hashtag IG win. But Cloud9 running the comp that they know and love and everyone can predict from them. We'll see if they can do it. And if you think so too, hashtag C9 win. And such an important game for Cloud9. If they win, they guarantee them spots, uh, themselves a spot in the quarterfinals in London. And seed will be determined by the next two games. But right now, the crowd in Paris will be cheering on Cloud9 as they take on Invictus Gaming for their last regularly scheduled games in the group stage. And for IG, it's playing the role of spoiler because they unfortunately cannot advance further in the tournament. So we've talked a little bit about what IG needs to do to counter Cloud9, but then we should probably refresh. What is it exactly that C9 wants to do? Well, in this game, I think they want at least to get a lane swap to get to the early game, open up one tower, and C9's signature move so far has been pushing up with Sneaky and then rotating, rotating into the mid lane for the Siege. And we'll see if they can do that. I mean, I know back in the North American LCS, we thought that Tristana was a great matchup into, into Kalista. You could sort of win the short-term trades a whole lot better. And, you know, C9 are actually known for playing heavy push, heavy aggressive lanes. Lemonation played a bunch of Karma, for example, just because they really relied on getting that lane push going. And we'll see if C9 are able to play around that. Kid and Kitties was the starting duo for Invictus Gaming, and they'd been losing lanes so much that in the last game of the World Championship, IG did bring out their substitute. We saw LG do the same thing and actually win some games, and they brought in Flame. So maybe the bench is going to be what works here for IG. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult task. Cloud9, they got their bread and butter comp. They got the style that allowed them to go 3-0. And this is the first time that they were able to get a similar sort of flavor, but it looks like it's going to be standard lanes, however reversed. You can see both Time and Kitties somewhat predicting it. They've moved themselves up top, and Sneaky and Lemon also moving themselves past Grom. This is interesting. We didn't have the deepest of wards down. There's one revealing the red buff of Invictus. That's from C9, but no such deep wards from IG. So this will be a blind-picked lane swap, from what I can tell. Yeah, we'll have to see. Normally, you see both teams do camp here because that's what you expect, but Lemonation Ooh. and Sneaky are actually moving in. They have been spotted here, so Kitties and Time are hiding. This could be a really good opening trade. Could be a lot of damage. Lemonation so early. 40 chunked down to half. You never trade until he actually steps into the brush, because then the surprise just gets you at least two more auto attacks. So that's already trigger happy here. It's expectable. Uh, time and Kitties first duel in here, but yeah, just not optimizing. Could have got more damage. Lemon already burning through some of those consumables. Move themselves up into lane. We'll take a look at these trades. Sneaky about to get a Grest on. Actually going to put that explosive charge onto Kitties and gets one or two autos while time's on the back line yeah. bomb. And before we move on to the other lanes, any Morgana lane is so centered around the bind. It's almost like Blitzcrank where it's a zoning tool more so than the power that the bind actually brings. If you miss your bind, you will immediately see good bot lanes just step up on you and trade because you have no counter trade potential. That was a good trade still from Sneaky's on. Kitty's there, but overall, this guarantees that IG is pushing. That's one check mark already. Pushing top. Let's look at the mid lane. Well, Lissandra's already at uh, Incarnation's tower, so that's one check there. The only remaining lane is the bot lane. And we're going to see that one actually is pushing away from Balls here. He's actually pushing Zataya back under his turret, but Meganar about to be popped. Could be something to be afraid of, but right now both junglers are just hard farming. No wards have spotted Kakao's jungle path. All C9 knows that it didn't start on his red buff, but that's not exactly a surprise for anyone. Luckily for C9, Elise is a very sustainable jungler, so Kakao will probably not get high down in the first invade because he's... At least just stays a lot higher HP in the jungle, and it's so risky to move into this jungle without any vision. So Kakao probably looking for a first base, and then we see what his plan will be exactly in this game. We do take a look at the mini map, and you can see that Balls is actually pushing 
in towards Zitai on the bottom lane, but the two other lanes for IG are pushing towards Cloud9. And for Balls, this is his fifth performance on Darius this tournament, really, really showing and he prefers Darius over all others. And he's got himself an advantage already early on. So Zetai, not having the greatest of days. As we said, he does have a big minion wave to farm out, but lost 1v1 earlier. And we'll see if uh, Bolts can get an advantage in that lane. Elimination actually skilled pool. This is something we don't really see too often from Organis anymore after he'd got nerfed almost into oblivion. Does barely yeah. any damage, so it may like be... we still see one point for the gold income. Yeah, for to trade him, but he's using it on the waves even to prep for farm. So now he's actually trading with it for the gold income. I still prefer two points in bind, honestly. Really? Okay. We go for the aggressive trade. Rookie here. Nice. Easy peasy escape. So we talked about how predictable Cloud9 is the team, but first of all, High gonna go in. Nice flash by Rookie to get away. But as we said, C9 picked the same champions every single game. Before the Vagar, actually it was after the Vagar show. I forget actually, but the Lissandra very good into that one. High getting jumped on by Kakaosta. Flash of the wall. Kakao still in range though. Jumps in, gets first blood in High's jungle. And that is exactly what Kripo was talking about. Pushing lanes, and you can see the play evolve. Kakao inside Cloud9's jungle. He had the support of Rookie, and that allows him to secure first blood. A really good move there, and also we can see why the Lissandra was picked early and then flex because they wanted to see the Vagar come out, and then they knew because Lissandra E can actually still get you out of the Vagar right. cage. A lot of these conventional mid lane champions, as we see Kitties take some poke here, they can, can't get out of the cage because they have to dash through it, and then obviously the new Vagar cage stops your movement. But Rookie can send his projectile over and he warps, he blinks outside, so that actually makes it really easy to play into Vagar. In addition, that he can self cast the ulti on himself, so. A lot of counterplay. Zatai's in trouble, gentlemen. He needs to crunch out. He's gone into the and flash. flashes the point blank cocoon. But summoner spell blown. So High has been able to get two summoners. However, he has given up first blood. And High has been revealed. And look what Kakao is looking to do. Well, he's going to look to hunt. Now he's on the hunt as though he's playing Rangar, but he's a different feline this game. High force run away after Chilling Smite to buy a better distance. And now the Spiderlings will just tank the javelin. He'll be okay. And yeah, if you look at the draft, you're like, how and why did C9 get this exact composition? Well, because it's becoming relatively predictable, and IG is using that into their favor. Every time High reveals himself, Kakao is going for an aggressive move. All IG has to do is survive the ganks. Two really solid flashes, one by Rookie and one by Zitai, have actually bought Kakao the time to really counter that play. And look at the parts that everyone's playing in this matchup as well. Rookie, first item gets a Negatron cloak, saying just make sure I don't got an incarnation, I'm flashless, let's say I have no damage happen at all. Elise is a magic damage jungler too. Let's survive this lane because we know Zatai can win this matchup already at 5 CS. We know the bottom lane that we picked on our very first round here on red side can win as well, and they're up eight. And what I also like about Rookie, not only the itemization and the decision making from the team comp, Lissandra is somewhat of a soft counter to Vigar. That glacial path allows you to get away from the event horizon. You can self-cast your ulti and survive. Kakao once again in the same area as High. Javelin toss, if that connects, there's even a teleport from Zatai. It's going to be 4v2. These guys need to leave, but Kakao's already here. The stun comes in. Balls is six. Has to flash. Thankfully for him, no Meganar. Just transformed back to the small one. But another Javelin hits means the kill comes through. Time gets the credit 2-0 IG. I absolutely love this play. IG is slowly whittling away at C9. So C9's reaction is well, we will switch the lanes up just like we wanted to do earlier in the game. But at this point in the game, IG used that fact to their advantage. Instead of trying to match whatever C9 is doing, they just move their weak pieces away from the uh, weak side and they move it to the strong side. Teleport with, with Zitai to the top lane. Gank and die from Kakao. And so yeah. they trade even towers, but they get a kill to boot. Yeah, unfortunate for Balls to die. Sneaky Lemon kind of would have liked the whole, oh, great, we get a 2v0 a turret. We love destroying these things. But as you mentioned, a lot of damage to the top side of the map. It's going to be a very low turret, but into the mid lane. Incarnation's dead. The event horizon comes up. Kakao gets one more to attack. Apprehend into the wall means he's stunned. Ball sidesteps and dunks to get one on the board for Cloud9. And they able to trade one back. C9 getting their gold okay. It's a 700 gold difference only because the top turret hasn't died yet. But with Balls leaving that lane, it's only a matter of time here for Zatai to knock it down. Kitty's moving in here. Balls is snared. Not quite level 6 yet, and obviously Sneaky's lurking around the corner. But keeping these trades one for one, it keeps C9 in the game. At the same time, it prevents them from doing what they want to do, which is set up those pushes in the side lane, and then allowing them to move into the mid lane. That's, that's IG's loose condition right now. Getting five C9 members in the mid lane that could just push into the tower siege and throw binds and cocoons at you. You really want to keep the map open, and they're doing a great job so far. Oh, we sneaky. Rotated. Managed to help out in the middle lane, find some time for balls, and 
Gonna start trying to knock down that top outer turret. Time has said uh, snap. Moved himself to the bottom half of the map. And I also just noticed IG have got that deep pink ward behind the red buff of Cloud9. Been alive for a little while. Let's keep a track on how much information that's going to give IG as this game progresses. And look, Rookie is no longer AFK shoving into Incarnation because it feeds him too much uh, AP right now. He's using the threat of Cacao Ganks and just leaving the lane in front of his tower. Incarnation also has to pick up blue. Again, this reveals high. A mid laner doesn't just walk into the blue buff and magically gets it. You know the jungler is there. And then we now know that high uh, will likely either path to the right or up. And let's see if IG can read that and really get a already warded. Going. They actually already know he's there. You can see Zatai is already walking backwards. He's a full screen away. And IG able to basically trade objectives again. Tristana Morg want to push. They know that. But the bot lane turret is already being attacked. C9 can do it first, but it's still going to go down two for two. Numbers advantage for IG on the bottom half of the map. Kakao is moving towards the Dragon Pit, but he's placing traps, placing wards. Found a pink ward. And Cloud9 is sieging the inner turret. So IG gonna clear out a pink. Maybe a tower dive being set up. Look for the cocoon to connect. Teleport's being channeled from Zitai. No, that's Rookie instead. And he's not gonna follow through on the Glacial Path. And here comes the TP in from the rest of the team. Zitai getting pulled in. Not yet, Meganar. They gotta get him first. That will be the dug before anything else can happen. Fears the minions away. Elimination survives, but of course, High has still died. Rookie is alone, but bot lane's still getting pushed. Yeah, look at the bot lane. The remaining members here from IG are pushing in Rookie. Fantastic E, but still gets clipped with a slow. He managed to survive. Flash away, tower is still standing. They should trade one tower for one and a kill for kill. Invictus Gaming hold themselves a 3,000 gold lead and can peel back for Dragon. Exactly, because they sent their bottom lane down there the first time, and while Cena had all their antics up in the top jungle, Kakao went and warded before he made the exact same style of dive to knock that bottom turret down, so they've already got control. People are already there. It's gonna be, uh, yeah, one for one, but a Dragon for free to IG. IG actually have been playing pretty fantastically well when it comes to mechanical plays. That was a 2v5, I believe, in the top lane, and they went one for one getting Rookie out of there. Also, the confidence that he played with, he could have flashed out of that Vega cage and then easily eat out, but he was, he took the greedy approach. It's like, I'll see how far I get with my E. If I then fail, I have an emergency flash. And just seeing this IG play a lot more confident, a lot more proactive and just smarter countering their opponents, this is not something we've seen the last few games with them. Certainly not. And for Cloud9, they're trying that tower dive up top, a little risky, a little scary. Just how much doubt is now being set into their minds on the verge of going 0-3 on the day. Of course, not entirely out of quarterfinals, even if they lose here, but the possibilities significantly lower for Kakao. Gonna get caught out. There's an event horizon and a very early respectful flash from Kakao. He has to, man. You gotta respect the event horizon there. I don't know it in Portuguese, unfortunately, but... Kakao still having to run away, but now, of course, he's flashless, walks onto a pink ward. That's a risky one. He will explode and sneaky. Gets kill number three for the team. Cage not quite landing anyone else, but C9 looking for that mid push. Yeah, look where C9 is and how many members. This is something we've seen before. And Kakao, he respects the cage, he respects the dark. But then he steps into the pink ward and he doesn't realize there's another dark area right behind that. People are, are across that wall, so you really have to keep respecting it. So this could be a little bit of a tempo swing in favor of Cloud9. They will have the final outer turret knocked down while still having their own mid to fall back on. Kitties gets caught and apprehended backwards. Fates oh. fall back to time. But oh. that's a oh. Boom. 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 Incarnation gets the kill. Five on four and Cloud9, they may want to look for more. Instead, we'll back away. Big minion wave on the bottom half of the map and wards to be placed. And C9 can run their time. No summoners, no ult, but Rookie's going to be their first to wave here. C9 don't make the quick move to go down there. They're going to let that farm be taken. A couple of wards down, C9 going to retreat. And now you can really see how frail a 1v1 composition is once it falls behind, in a sense. It is incredibly strong if you can lock the enemy down because there's almost no counterplay once it's in full motion. Yep. The problem is if you don't get into full motion, you make one mistake in the setup, then you get punished so hard. C9 with a fantastic group, a couple nice cages, and kills to boot. Well, Invictus had the Exodia comp, but when he walked for the pink ward, they activated C9's trap card and suddenly all went poorly. It's still a 1,200 gold lead, though. Even though turrets are the same and kills are the same, look at the farm lead, top lane and jungle specifically. Actually, even the mid, there's a lot of members who are significantly out farming. So the, the laning prowess of ING and the farming speed of Kakao keeping them ahead. Also, you have to factor in that a Vagar can be down slightly in gold and still have the raw amount of power in the game. Incarnation hasn't been doing the greatest. He's now sitting on 91 bonus ability power from that Baleful Strike, but he's 
playing forward with pressure, so he's not maximizing the perfect CS, but instead he's looking for these cage opportunities, and honestly, it is the right approach. It's still roughly, what, 1,700 gold worth of AP for free? Ballpark? Yeah. Which is something you have to always factor in. Um, and we just need to see whether our Incarnation can find the targets. Because there are some ways to avoid it. The Fates Call if he tries to hit Kitties by accident. The Self Cast on that Frozen Tomb from it, Rookie as well. So there, there are some small, small windows to outplay. It helps if Time walks into your cage and then flashes out when he's predicted. So you mean like uh, this? Traveling. Time, Event Horizon. Oh, he can't I move think anywhere. He's gonna go down. No. Dodge the W, perfect. Well, Incarnation decides not to throw the Primordial Boost. Later in the game, it's enough to make that move and then just do QR. At this point in the game, Incarnation does need this full combo and maybe even a, another iteration of the Q, but. You can already see the pressure he's putting out. He's no longer being pushed back in his lane, and Kakao can no longer find Hyde because Hyde is simply just grouping with his members, and the time it takes for Kakao to go anywhere, a potential siege could arise. So C9 with a lot more uh, proactivity in this phase of the game. So Dragon should be up in about two and a half to three minutes time. Cloud9 with that earlier push, they got some vision in the top half of the jungle. This will allow them to secure a blue buff uncontested and hopefully leave vision. There you go, two minutes on the timer for a potential future Dragon Challenge. And, but the thing is right now, C9 are slightly owning the map. There's wards kind of a mismatched side. There's a bunch of wards on the left side of the, the jungle that are IGs, which doesn't mean very much. There's no turrets to contest really up there. Dragon, or sorry, Baron's not up for five minutes. So C9 are actually the first team to get relevant wards in this side of the map. And as a quick tangent, you're noticing Double Abyssal Scepter, Kakao and Rookie both realizing as kind of the primary targets for incarnation in a lot of these fights, getting early MR emphasizing not getting one shot. Not finding finds Kakao, but nothing more than that. Look at the vision, though. Playing in the darkness. Hang on. Kitty's walking in. Oh, Fate's Time call. Is. But that's an important cooldown ahead of the impending dragon fight. It's a little under two minutes yep. is the total cooldown for time, so it will not be available for the fight. IG had the right approach in the early game, so their zero to ten minutes were perfect. Right now, though, they're, they're falling into old habits, especially when you look at the LPL. They're trying to contest the dragon when they shouldn't. They should switch their attention to the other side of the map because in a perfectly warded deep jungle right there, it is so incredibly easy for Cocoons, Dark Fightings, or Vagar Cage to catch anybody and blow them up immediately. So face checking into the dark, you gotta you just gotta respect it and move to the other side of the map. Oh, nine got a big chunk of that tower down. Still really committing a lot of time and resources to the top half of the map. Wave is pushing against them down bottom and Balls with teleport available has been left alone in the top lane. He's currently a level behind Zetai. Yeah, this but is most Balls games really, is he gets behind in the lane matchup and the rest of C9 carries him the room to catch back up. But look, C9 actually don't care about the Dragon. They only care about the illusion of the Dragon. And now they use that time where IG pick up the Dragon, the second Dragon, to buy Balls some more time to get even in that matchup. They don't really want it. They just want you to face sec and come and fight you for it. So this is... IG are playing into C9's hand. We do have to obviously be afraid of a potential 5 Dragon later on if there's some mistakes coming on, but... We're looking at a very, very even mid game. Cloud9 decide, hey, not worth the risk. They've peeled out, committed too much time and resources. And even though they've got the crowd, they will have timing, so they know there's some freedom. And IG gonna get it. I mean, they all just recalled back here. Now, the tie can try to back up and try to get back up to that top turret, but Balls is getting enough time with this early Black Cleaver to get some pretty significant damage down on that top turret. Say tower for Dragon, but what we saw was there a tower and three waves for the Dragon here, evening out that XP advantage. and. Everything happened in full vision. IG had four members on the Scarlet Crab. It doesn't get easier to shot call when you have complete information. Well, mini map. Sneaky's aware something's fishy. Oh, he knows. IG yep. have got vision control of the river bush. This is where you just throw the, the bait in front of them, dangle it, just mm -hmm. to make them interested long enough to wait. But not They're still there. To get no, caught. Sneaky, don't. Maybe sneaky. Is. Well, Sneaky's got a Sneaky's oh. going to get dunked. And that was only him. two of them. Didn't realize there was more against the wall. A huge misplay. Sneaky goes down by a well-executed trap of Invictus Gaming. And now they can go push mid. On well, the numbers advantage, the Ty's Mega Null will be timing out. And the rest of IG gonna wait for another minion line to conger its way to the Christmas cage. Cloud9 gonna look to defend the best they can. They have pulled, looking for a cage fight here. They pulled the balls down, still not level 11. But he doesn't use his teleport, and it looks like Cloud9 can hold for the time being. IG just lost their primary engage, though, on that pick. Because if you look at what they're bringing to the table, Kitties is secondary engage. Zitai with Nar is secondary engage. Kakao is just damaged, so all the really hard CC that is targetable is on Rookie. Without his ulti, he gets blown up immediately. More importantly so, 
we, there's no way to disable the Vagar. If you go in for any hard engage, Vagar cage comes out and you get denied. Either you get stunned or the team that follows up on you gets stunned. So you really want to buy some time. And then you need the Zonias or the ultimate available for Rookie. Unless they can stack the CC right away. A flash ult from Rookie throwing in kitties and somehow getting yeah. to knock up into the chain stun. These are possibilities, but of course, it will be hard. Flash down, ulti even still down from Rookie as well. Now, we mentioned the top lane turret getting chunked early. I just want to point out that it is still alive at about 300 health. Uh, the threat of the frozen mallet rush Nar was too great, and Balls actually backed out quite True. early to right. finish it down. And look at Kakao's build. Not only did he go second item Abyssal, a QSS picked up as well. Wow. Get himself out of those bindings or even event horizons. Like, it's more MR, but it's a defensive build. It's one of these suboptimal routes just to deal with some of the threats that C9 have It looks suboptimal, but when we saw Score face off against the Vagar, uh, I think it was yesterday, he went in every time and he almost got blown up immediately as a tank of Rek'Sai. Yeah. So somebody has to take that cage. You can't wait for him to not cast it. He, that will come out at one point, and the most ideal player to do that is either your support or your jungler. So in that, in that way, it does, ma does make sense for Kakao to take that approach. Right. He can stay alive best he can. Of course, you mentioned the support tanking it. Kitties can always get ulted out, so you hope for C9's sake. You never see Incarnation's ulti come out for that cannon. We'll see. Lots of magicers being stacked on the team means it is an easier playground for Darius and Tristana, yep. who are not being itemized against in any meaningful way right now. You can feel the slowdown now, as the inner turrets are so much more difficult to siege. Cloud9 had a good ring of vision, but they may be falling prey to some shenanigans as Invictus have moved their way into this bottom quadrant of the map. Balls smell something fishy and will back away in time. There's no real vision for Cloud9 in their own jungle and they are losing some control. They're moving to the Baron area already though, faking a potential bait here. Teams don't really have too much vision in the Baron pit or in the Baron area at 20 minutes into the game, especially if your jungler is not running Sightstone. Remember, this IG is playing a very spread out style with very limited amount of wards. Trinket upgrades will be uh, fundamental for this to work. Kitties is going in, slicing Maelstrom. Incarnation's oh. in trouble, but look at that event horizon. Fate's call will get him out alive. They've got the teleport from Balls, and IG tried to set it up. And now the teleport's on cooldown, so Balls can't show up, and Sneaky was spotted on the top side of the map. IG had a small power play. Not going to get much for it, but you saw how close it was to killing Incarnation. Yeah, the CPM here for uh, Incarnation is around six. One cage every 10 seconds here, cage per minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we can uh, expect here. So every 10 seconds, the cage can come out. So that is actually brutal in fights. Zatai taking a bit of damage. C9 on the hunt, trying to knock these guys back. Of course, mid tier two is available, and the waves coming with them. C9 have zoned out Invictus for a precious few seconds, but not enough minions there to actually push the turret down. The Spiderlings chase through, but here comes the engage. Here comes the tie. No Meganar just yet. Rookie ults in. High's in trouble. Frozen Tombs down. He gets gnawed against the wall, and it's time that picks up the kill credit. Incarnation and Sneaky trying to deal damage from the back line, and Sneaky's forced to rocket jump and then flash away. It's a two for one, as I think Rookie was unable to follow through on that glacial path. Cloud9 managed to survive, but they lose one extra member. And that's with them stopping the immediate Meganar. It only gets better from there. Cloud9 now losing a lot of their flashes. They just didn't have the tools to deal with the engage. Cage was down, they were out of position, they were too clumped up, and obviously they were they were focusing the primary tank there in the Mega Nar form from Zitar. So that was a really poor fight. So C9, in a sense, got lucky that they got out of there alive uh, two for one. They did have to burn a lot of flashes, though. You can see the Cocoon comes out, tries to stop that one. Now, Heist is an easy target, though. He's not very tanky at all. Runeglaive and Abyssal, one of the squishiest builds you could go for. They're just thankful that the tie actually does die. It gives Sneaky that rocket jump reset and the flash over the wall. Yeah, if time actually moved backwards to heal as a top laner, or if they worked together, healed each other, that could have actually been another dead Sneaky right there. Unfortunately, time only goes forwards, and that means finding kills <laughs> onto balls. As he's got that hurricane completed, Blade of the Ruin King, a CS advantage. So substitution at 20 minutes. I think it's fair to say working out thus far. Different itemization, different build, and time showing up, Also let's he's say. maxing E, which is necessary. Yep, the attack speed, E max build, Hurricane's in there as well. Now, during that replay, the top lane tier two did die, so if you look at the gold, it's very close. That's C9 finally getting their fourth turret kill of the game. But Dragon number three is already here, and with a player like that, of course, IG are there on time. It's gonna be an easy rend, an easy pickup. Dragon number three for IG. C9's gonna start sweating. C9 is still grouped. We can imagine that their plan is to just go for a Baron play around the timing of uh, Dragon number four and then hope to close out the game or convincing map control fashion to 
deny that fifth dragon, but it is a risky game they're playing. And it is a very close game so far, despite Cloud9 giving away uh, advantages to IG throughout the entirety of this match so far, they are staying relevant in gold. They have been down in CS, but Incarnation has farmed up a sizable lead over Rookie, and it's on a champion that scales so exceptionally well. IG seems to be chronically underwarding though. Three sweepers for Vision Denial. Kinney's obviously gets Fates Call out of this cage right here, but look at the vision that C9 has on the map and how much Vision Denial they have in their kit, especially because even high, if he doesn't run the Sidestone, he does have a couple of nice wards that he's placing, and Kakao invested a lot in this defensive build, and I feel like IG are running out of vision. Well, we can look and see that they're mostly only having wards on their side of the map, though it's where C9 likes to play. The tie walking forward, close to Meganar, down a bit low, Cage comes through. Oh! oh! Holy crap! You don't face check those brushes, not against the Vega. He doesn't care if you're a tank, he just blows you up. Easy bind into CC chain, but and then the only get MR in Satai's kit is in his shoes. And the thing is, he wasn't Mega Nar, so no bonus stats. But quick pro tip for the Vagar players out there: second item Void Staff always. It is the better damage item in pretty much all circumstances. So the early Void Staff definitely being a big deal for that. Is Mathematically, there, there a, it's true. Is there a counterpoint if you get an insane amount of AP off your Q when Rabadon spikes it up? Basically, no, because your damage is so high. Like it requires like really extreme situations, and uh, in almost all basic cases. Void Staff just is better. Incarnation has farmed three needlessly large rods worth of free AP on that Baleful Strike. Um, Let's watch that again here. Use the slow motion. Goku goes wide, but Vine hits, and then it's yeah, it's not hard to land that cage. Also, the cage keeps Incarnation is sneaky protect. Look at the placement. He could have placed that cage to the top right too, but he just makes sure that if people really want to go in a straight line towards the carries, that they actually get clipped by that cage too. Mm -hmm. And it's the little things right there, and then you blow up one target, and the difference between the IG lineup is if they hardcore engage and they lose their primary engage, then they can't really take fights after that. C9 can take repetitive fights. Bindings come up again, cocoons come up again, bigger cages come up every 10 or 9 seconds by this point, so comfortable position. There is the possibility, the only problem we've seen from both teams, when they find those individual picks, there's very often not an optimal objective to go for. Sure. You know, they have been getting some damage on towers. Out of Earth are dead, dragons, dragon's dead on respawn. So, Cloud9, they've regained some tempo back, regained some control, but look, there's not a lot of deep vision inside of IG, so C9 have to look again for more face checks, look again for more picks that to all, maintain control. That all depends on your definition of an objective, because people can rate vision control around that. Oh, oh, sneaky! Flash engage. Goodbye. Good zone is there, and here comes Kitty's as well to lock up the team for a little bit more. There's plenty of time here, and they've got to run and run away. Invictus looking pretty good, but you're still seeing balls to rejoin this fight. Two kills already for Invictus. Another lockdown of this. Darius, not long for this world. A double kill for time. Five and one on Kalista. A three for zero. It's not over yet. IG have got a minion wave pushing forward. 5v2. All of the wave clear is going to be reliant on Incarnation, and instead, IG look towards the Baron. Five seconds before Sneaky's up, 20 before Balls and higher up, and there's no TP for Balls. And will they start it? Yes, they will. There's a tie up in the front. Kakana putting the damage in here. And Lemonation and Incarnation kind of by themselves holding their hopes for an auto berth into the quarterfinals if they can win this game, but it's slipping away now. Incarnation is going to try and time a W Q combo. Can he steal it? A perfect. Ooh. Oh, not going to work this time. Invictus, get the Baron after the team fights. That was actually a really smart approach from Invictus Gaming. It even caught me completely off guard as I was going to go into a rant about objectives and vision control. IG, they played on their strong side where they had vision denial. Rookie snuck in and he just went in with the E from Losano. Something we very often see you know, mid laners do, but they just did it from the right side. Left side was completely in control from C9 and it gave them a false sense of security. He just comes behind Sneaky here, instant flash R, denies the jump, cage is not enough, and then follows up here on Incarnation. So, has the zone, has to die. Ulti, that kitty zones, he gets pulled back. So this is a yeah, beautiful engage sequence here from IG overall. Even High trying to go back in, just gets knocked up by the, uh, the you know, second part of the Callista ultimate there. Then Balls just kited too much because there's no CC left for him. Incarnation zoned out to the wrong side. High is already dead, nothing he can do. Five and one on Callista for IG. Thanks to the fight in the Baron, they now built themselves a sizable lead. 4,000, the largest of the game so far. Found themselves some key item break points, and they're slowly creeping that vision into C9's territory. The story of the 0 to 15 minutes game plan for IG repeats itself here, though, with the Baron. They really want to split push, keep C9's bed, because even with Baron buff, moving in here is incredibly hard for IG, because they'll have to go for a really, really big dive unless they can flank. 
C9 will have to yield some towers, but when it comes to defending the base, it's incredibly hard to flank there, so likely we're gonna see some split pushing after these initial towers drop down. That's what IG wanted to do a long time ago, and that's what their team composition can do very well in. Another dragon is up. This will be dragon number four. Cloud9 are relatively close by if they wanted to contest. It's 20 odd seconds and they need to do a lot of work because it's very dark. But it's still one minute of Baron buff and even though a lot of that power is buffing up minions, it's still up to 40, at this point probably 25 attack damage and ability power per member there. So uh, the bonus stats plus the fact that C9 has no dragons themselves means they're down actually more like 6,000 gold worth of stats even though the gold lead itself is only uh, 4k. It's, you know, add, add 3,000 to that. And this is something we see very often, um, especially in Europe. One team will get up to four dragons, and it's the fifth one where teams will decide to contest. Cloud9, not going to run the risk. They don't have the ability to clear the vision. They don't have the ability to push deep enough to that dragon pit. And the fourth one has been secured by Invictus. IG might be trying to play Heartbreak here to Cloud9. C9, they have six minutes right now. That's all the time that's left on the clock for them to really find an opening here and get the game even again. C, split push here from Zitai. He's getting caught by Sneaky, though. You can see an arm flash. Yep, rapid fire means a lot. There's the rocket jump forward. Hex Drinker popped, and this could be enough. Yes, Sneaky with a red buff creates an opening. Now, Rookie getting stunned, but High is going to take a lot of damage. His Vitalings are dead. Here comes Kitties. He's ferocious, and down goes the kill. But this completely shuts down IG's push. We talked about it earlier. If you get shut down that 1-3-1 one, one split push in the earlier stages, you have room to punish. Right now, that punishment is them losing the entirety remainder part of that Baron buff. Any potential setup, and C9 relatively even here. 4,000 gold behind it means a lot, but it doesn't mean anything if you can get the jump on the enemy team. So Cloud9 still yet to take down or move into IG's territory, so they're going to need to look for more of those picks. They've got that banner of command for Lemonation, so that could start opening up some side lane pressure and allow them a little bit of wiggle room as we get closer to more objectives like the Dragon, like the Baron. Honestly, I feel like this build as well is curious for high. He's going for a really high ability power, low tank build with the fact that there's so many good hard dive champions. You've got a Callista ulted Kennen, you've got you know, a Meganar, a, a Lissandra. It's so easy to pick someone up and high has been getting basically one shot in every team fight. Okay, the early jungling didn't go well. He was behind already, but the fact that high is now 0-5 is pretty troubling. Same time, he's 0 5, but he can still play a large damage role in the team fight. So they're just going, operating under the approach that they're going from four carry composition with a defensive Morgana. Speaking of elimination, he can split push. So we see high path by here. Okay, and Kakao not going to find the opportunity. They've got that pink ward in the red buff, so they know they're safe. Surprise. Again, playing aggressive inside Cloud 9's jungle. Surprise, elimination didn't go for the Zeke's here. Uh, to buff up that Tristana even more, especially since his build is a little weaker since he had to opt into the Hex Drinker. Yeah. Split push, it can like help you a little bit, but it's it's rough into, especially um, just these melee split pushers or these 80 damage split pushers that will just tear apart that tank in like two hits. So It does help them with the Siege if they ever get Baron. Then it's incredibly, uh, really, really good for C9. Yeah, sneaky itemizing a lot of magic resist with the Hex Drinker in QSS means he's not... It's just weird. They're, they're splitting their roles so oddly. I guess Sneaky's trying not to get one shot, and the QSS helping that, but they're kind of over-prioritizing yeah. defense in the wrong roles, and then over-prioritizing offense on the wrong roles. That's what it feels like to me. Well, we'll find out if it affects the next big team fights. Two minutes to Baron, about three till Dragon. Balls has got Teleport available. He went down to meet Rookie, who also has his TP up, as does Zetai. So more map play open options uh, available for Invictus. Double zone, yes. Double QSS picked up, but... A bit of a lacking of Mercury Threads. Mercury Threads are incredibly good against this composition that C9 likes to run like they do right here. I think TSM actually ran a similar composition and the enemy team just continuously kept picking up those Mercury Threads. So IG looking to just get out of those cages with the QSS and then hopefully to deny some damage with the Zonias. Well, one minute on Baron Nasher. Already a 4,000 gold lead and this pink ward allows Rookie to sneak in. No one knows he's here. Well, Balls may find out very soon. Oh, Lemon. I'm going to run the risk. Every single time we see Rookie or Kakao inside Cloud9's jungle, there's not a whole lot of support around them. It's a one or two man invasion squad. And they're getting away with it thus far. Cloud9 is, is, is sticking primarily to their lanes, sticking primarily to the CS that is moving towards them. But they're, they're closing the eyes 
their eyes to the real problem that's about to emerge. Uh, 30 seconds from now, Baron will spawn, and there's no vision set up whatsoever for C9. A minute and 50 seconds from now, Baron, uh, Dragon will spawn, and there's no vision whatsoever too. So C9, they have to group and push out at one point, but they're delaying the inevitable. They just want to find an opening, but see, IG is playing patient enough to not allow that. Oh, well, C9 finding a bit of an opening. Kakao at half health already. There's the virtue of the damage build, but Kitty's just barely stopped by the cage down to half health, but you wouldn't dare ult because of Fate's Call. So much damage onto IG with five seconds to Baron. This might be the grouping and the pressure that Cloud9 could be looking for. Uh, Balls did channel that teleport. He's with the group, but look at the minion waves pushing against him. Cloud9, they need to deal with that as well as trying to get vision. So much to juggle. Well, we'll see if C9 can juggle this turret down first. IG looking around the side. They got the hunt on the balls. He's okay, though. Top lane, as you mentioned, is pushing down. And Zatai can run over and use teleport if he needs to. Rookie's TP is down as well, so at least Incarnation is a teleporter for C9. Keep your eyes on Rookie every time that cage goes down. For the remaining six seconds, he's going to be so incredibly... He's looking. ...aggressively positioned in these fights. Incarnation, thankfully, has a QSS. That could have been a flash hold in the making in a, a game-winning team fight. Cage won't land. A good QSS could also be game changing for Cloud9. The Event Horizon will impact so much flow during the course of a team fight. Cloud9 signaling 30 seconds to go until Dragon is up. They are now in the Baron area, threatening a rush, threatening a start. For IG, they don't want to go uncontested. Close. And there are wards behind Cloud9 if Zitai wanted to try come in with a flank. Trinkets on cooldown and Kiddies is out of wards. This is rough. If that ward gets cleared in the back of the pit and we don't get an immediate mid-push reaction from IG, we could actually see a successful Baron bait from C9 here or a forced fight. Meganar just got triggered. C9 should not be looking to do battle. Just waiting out the Meganar. IG, of course, running towards Dragon. They do take it slower. They've already gotten four of them. C9 yeah. could have traded this for Baron, but right now they're moving, they're playing into IG's hand. Scuttlecraft for the accelerated engage too, so now Meganar C9 end. is stuck. C9 seem to be the pushing time. IG away just a little. The Event Horizon is down. It's a 10-second cooldown. It has been pulled. can burn this. Dragon is out of the pit, but now it's C9 backing away. Look at the minimap. Minions pushing towards Cloud9's base. Invictus are in control. They've got the Scuttle Crab for engage power as well. And Nar is no longer Zatire. He can build up this bar and get himself back in on this one. Kakao and Co are starting, though. C9 walking in. Zatai on the wrong side as Mini Nar. This is for Aspect of the Dragon. It has re Set. The dragon is regenerating minions again, pushing towards that inhibitor turret. The event horizon's down. Dragon's oh! the rest. Cloud9 secure it. The zoning event horizon, and they're trying to get away. And this is exactly what Kakao talked about in his opening interview. Levitation has to run, though. They're going in. Kitties is going to pop the ulti. Event horizon buys some time, but here comes Rookie. Incarnation gets up, but Zatias Meganar, he to finds die. the stun. Two kills already, and they're not done yet. A quick kill back comes in, but it's a slow right now. Invictus are looking to clean up. Sneaky, along with Haya, the last two standing. Three for two. Baron is alive as well, and Invictus are peeling back. But if we go back to right before this game, Kakao talk about why Haya is such a successful jungler, because there is zero hesitation whatsoever on his objective calls. That was an incredibly bold move here, and Sneaky with some bravado too in a fight, because he actually jumped on his target to, to kill it to get the reset to then jump out. So C9 getting away there, three for two is actually impressive. But you can see the level of damage output here. Incarnation, I think, making a strange choice to go for his zone. I think he needs a pistol as well. There's so much front-loaded magic damage. Rookie and Kakao have the right idea of just itemizing defensively enough to not get one shot, but still do their job. Incarnation could do basically nothing, even though he had a perfect QSS. You see this fight come in here, and IG just want to jump in. They've got the engage items already. Kitties doesn't care if he gets stunned. Incarnation chunk to one quarter health before anything even happens. The tie has the easiest of push ins. Keep your eyes on Sneaky though. He finishes up one guy, goes on Rookie, uses a jump on Rookie, kills him, and then gets a jump out. Many players would have just instantly jumped out there, but good. Just spatial awareness there. And that was a fight two for three with Incarnation doing nothing in a position that C9 was forced to overplay their hand and just go for a 50 50 on, on Dragon. Imagine if C9 can repeat what they did earlier, which is get vision control around these areas like they did on Dragon Area before or Baron. Then this composition can still blow up IG. While they've got time, QSS does come out instantly. High was able to just repel for that one. So here's some of that vision you're looking for, Krepo. 
tension is real high. The crab belongs to IG. Baron has actually been started. Did time? They know. He started to channel the teleport. Kakao isn't going to find a javelin toss, but that looks like a mega nar. And Kira just got in. got in. It's going to be the smite. Kakao gets it. And here's the ensuing battle. One kill already. Balls can't get away. Kakao is just cleaning this battle up. One kill back for Incarnation, but the stun is one spell away from landing. This Vega refuses to be stopped. Can he get away with this? Baron still to IG, and it's still a 4 to 2, but Incarnation made it look closer. Oh, if that Baron from Lamination actually connected on Kitties, then Sneaky wouldn't have been forced to use his Buster Shot defensively, so one spell can really turn the tides in his fight. Really good steal, though, from IG, but again, these plays, you have to be confident to make these calls. On the world stage, when you're playing for this much, when this much is on the line, Highest as well, they're scuttle cap, they have teleport, we're just gonna finish off this Baron. Look, Kenny comes in here, Bind misses. Good flash. Kitty splashes over it, and then Buster shot reactively from Sneaky, which is good. But at that point, position is compromised for C9, and they can't afford to play when they're behind on the positioning. Uh, no flash from Sneaky either. He actually could have flashed away from Kakao and gotten a bit more space. You can see the burst available here. Actually eats right through Zatai's Hex Drinker. And that's the thing is, I just feel like C9 needs two threats that can stay alive. Sneaky can do a plenty of damage. You saw that in two fights ago. Incarnation can do a lot, you saw it in this one. It's just a matter of them living. Yeah, but C9 have only lost fights where they kind of like panic. Oh, gosh. I won't call out a fight. No, not really. But they have only played fights where they allowed IG to aggress upon them when they're actually trying to secure an objective. In open space, when they can kite, I just want to see how it plays out. Out for Cloud9, they may not get that opportunity. And 40 minutes in, Incarnation is over 1,000 AP, but the problem is his team is 10,000 gold down and against Baron-empowered minions. IG are sieging up the mid lane in Heaven Turret, and with just one and a half waves of minions, two waves call it the siege as they've chunked down that inhib turret. Just look for Rookie whenever they siege. He has to position in Fog of War on either the left or the right side. Hopefully get that with a pink ward and then threaten at least some zone in that area, so that people have to be afraid from Rookie diving, because 45 C9 is still holding onto this tower. And you know, every time I look at the items, I see Lemonation's Banner of Command is available. It has not been used. I don't know how many times he's actually put that down. Event Horizon catches Zitai. Whoa. Wow, Rookie went down somehow on the back. I assassinated him. How on earth did he do that? No KP time. Elise's how. That's. He's looking to retreat. All of a sudden, Cloud9, they've said, we don't care about your Baron. Whoa. We'll just turn this around. C9 was just all about the X Factor here. High gets the one shot. Rookie doesn't have QSS. I forget if he sold it for a new item or if he never even had it. But either way, the stun lock just kills him. The level of confusion and question marks around High's build may now be justified. They have 30 seconds until Rookie has respawned. Cloud9 have got Tristana and the Explosive Charge and the Tower. They're now knocking on the Inhibitor as well. Kakao's on the sideline, but it's Inhibitor to Cloud9. 15 seconds remain for Rookie to spawn. He could change his boots upgrade for a T3 home guard, engage somewhere, but it's 9 Yeah, they disengage, they get out of there. Their top lane turret did fall, but they can pick up these waves and and C9 have about five seconds left to control the map as best they can because the dragon's coming up in 20 seconds. C9 does have every ultimate and every summoner spell. Same situation though for Invictus Gaming except for Kakao's Flash. The difference right now is that C9 is in control of the Baron area and they can punish IG for passing through choke points. That's what they want to look for. Don't let them get in and just try and put that cage down. Could this be a comeback for Cloud9? Dragon is alive. Aspect is being threatened by IG, and Balls would need to teleport in. He's actually Going. channeling it already. So the dance has begun. And Mega Nardo is almost here. It's a threat for Cloud9. Aspect of the Dragon could win the fight. IG getting pushed a bit backwards. High is posturing forward. 3,000 health. Kakao goes in. Here comes the battle. Aspect of the Dragon in for Invictus. Incarnation over the wall. Kitty's safe as well. First two come through. Rookie's dead. But Time and Co. are crushing phases. Incarnation, the only one alive. Kitty's here to say hello. Not dying just yet. Gets a stun. Here's the ignite. There's the triple kill. Kitty's on support. Kennen gets three. And this is where it all comes down to questioning the C9 tunnel vision on the Dragon and should they have opted in for the fight, played a little better. But yeah, if High gets that smite, suddenly he's the king and maybe C9 can win that fight. But IG, it just cost C9 too much in that fight to go for the Dragon because they just lost the ensuing fight regardless of who smote that Dragon.
And IG, even though they cannot get themselves out of fourth place in this group stage, they might be able to win their last game at Worlds here. Time in the roster, 9-1 and 8 on the Callista. And Kitty's with some great engages as well. There is nobody to tank the Nexus turrets for IG, so they will settle for two inhibitors. They did lose a Nexus turret of their own thanks to supers, but this is that fight once more. Yeah, Bowles is positioning offensively here to... Actually, no, he didn't even do that. Bowles went in for the Dragon. There was just too much tunnel vision because... Darius's role in these fights is to move oh, in and Megadar, prevent though. people from coming in and doing exactly what Zedai did there. Three-man Megadar. Look at where Incarnation ended up in that fight. That means something went wrong at one point and people were zoning and peeling enough and they were tunnel visioning on that dragon. You can still win a fight where people get aspect halfway through. Just, ah. But it's incredibly hard because it's so easy hindsight. You know, we get a replay, get prepared <laughs> nice. He's like, Fair yeah, hi. We're not playing call. for a quarterfinal position and to go 0-3 on the day, which is what Cloud9 is facing. But for Invictus, they pull timeouts in the final hour, and he's 9-1-8. and eight. His Callista performance is leaps and bounds better than what we saw from Kid, both last week and earlier today. Ooh. And IG are just... Honestly, they're punishing C9 who are looking weaker. Let's also keep that in mind. C9 have not had a great day on the rift and on the stage. Don't forget, though, at this point, one full combo from Incarnation deals over 3,000 damage. So he only needs like two parts of that. He can literally one shot time. Once he gets his flash, he can flash in QR and time is gone. Well, that would mean IG would be out of time and their base could die. Uh, Incarnation. Yes. yes, it would. Yes, we'll, it would. We'll need to wait a little longer because his flash is not available for one of those combinations. Zetai is going to start charging up that Mega Dark after he gets caught by a Dark Binding. And it's currently Incarnation on the bottom lane dealing with the supers. He's pushed that wave out, bought a little bit of breathing room. Trying to look for superlatives, different words. Yeah. And Invictus going to back away. But it's two dead inhibitors to one, so someone has to respond to the bottom lane. Probably going to be Incarnation because he still has teleport. There are a few wards still here for C9. They see this coming, the team's coming across. Teleport coming just to walk a bit closer. C9 trying to stop the Baron attempt. Zatai stuck in the pit. Baron's at 5,000 health. They can't finish this off. Zatai forced out, but he's close to Meganar. He could try to come back in. And all the while, Botlin's still getting pushed in by supers. Mercurial Scimitar was used by time. He can't run the risk of being caught by any of those skill shots. C9, do not try to finish the low health Baron. And the dance has begun once more. IG finally playing with patience until Zatai flanks the Incarnation, catches him in the he's cage. He's stuck in the pit. No flash, but sneaky. Still has the black shield. One Meganar in towards Boss. Lemonation, the only man taking the kitty zone. Time survives. Kakao drops. kills off Incarnation. Rookie gets the second. Sneaky force to flash. But Zonius buys time. And Kitties again is the man engaging the fight. Sneaky, the last man alive. He's going to go down. And that's going to be game. There's Super Minions pushing onto Cloud9's Nexus. And to play spoiler in the final hour, Invictus Gaming. We'll be knocking down the Nexus. It looks so good. The cage fight for John C9, but it wasn't enough. IG close out. They are on to the Nexus turret and Invictus Gaming pick up a win against Cloud9. Well, time to go down in history books being undefeated at the World Championship this year. His first and only performance here at the World Championship had a great game for himself. This felt a bit like the IG I think we wanted to see that many people had predicted as being at the top of their group, but instead they still finished fourth. Yeah, IG with that roster swap really invigorated their play. And they added another dimension to their play here, really. Yeah. Came out. <laughs> so what does this mean for the rest of the day? Uh, first of all, I love hearing the Parisian crowd yelling IG as well. Great support regardless of their home team or away. The next game is Fnatic AHQ. If Fnatic win, they will clinch first place Either and team. force a tiebreaker with Cloud9 and AHQ for second. Right, whoever wins that game is the number one team, whether that's Fnatic or whether that's AHQ. The winner of our next match is the number one seed in the group. The loser of that match will be facing Cloud9 in a one game tiebreaker for that second quarter final spot. So both those teams that we'll see up in the future have two chances to win one game to get into the quarters. And C9, Continuing that North American trend, 0 and 9 for NA teams in the last week of the group stage. This could be 0 and 10, or it could be 1 and 9, and they would secure that second spot in the quarters themselves. What a story 